Okay, so we're starting chapter four. We're talking about deposits. And then you guys, those of you guys who have a job, how does your employer pay you? There's some of the different ways that an employer can pay you. Pardon? With a check. So at the end of every couple of weeks, they give you a check. What are some other ways? Direct deposit. So it goes right from their checking account right into your checking account. And what's the good old fashioned way? Cash money. So um, if you guys get cash money and you want to be legal, you fill out a form. Called a 1099, and my tax guy. Every time I bring out, um, bring in a 1099 when I do taxes, he's like, "Oh, really?" Because a 1099 means that I've received money that I haven't paid taxes on, so I still owe taxes on it. Um, if you win money from gambling, um, and you win a thousand dollars or more, you have to fill out a 1099, and the casino will give you a form to fill out. If um, anybody that I hire, like I hired a contractor to help build floats for homecoming, um, to reimburse the contractor for his time, he had to fill out a 1099 form. So if it's anything that's cash money or whatever, um, the government expects you to pay taxes on it. And if you don't pay tax on money you get, um, in the form of cash, then you are potentially risking um, getting in trouble with the IRS. So I have to say that, but I say that it's it's along the lines of when you're driving a car, at, at your age when you're driving a car and the speed limit is 65 and you go 70. What are the chances that somebody is gonna pull you over? It just depends upon the scenario. So it's, it's along those lines. So you're taking a risk that you're going to get away with it if you don't pay taxes on money you get in the form of cash. And then the older you get, like if you live on your own and you, you're you paying all of your bills, but you're not telling the government that you have a job, then it starts looking suspicious to them and you could potentially get audited. So anyway, but our objective today is to compute the total amount of money that we deposit to our checking account. So a, and you guys please write this in, a deposit consists of checks, currency, or coins. Give me a check mark if you know what a check is. Right. So just show me the check mark. Give me a check mark if you know what a check is. It's the one you write. Right? So what do you write, right? Um, currency, what do you do when you make it rain? What? When you make it rain. You're making it rain, right? Um, what would you rather, would you rather make it rain with bills or with coins? Coins. It's you in the eye, you need like special goggles for the coins. So currency, I think of currency as um, what you use when you make it rain. So currency is paper bills. And coins is the metal. And you just pray that it doesn't rain coins on you. Because um, that could hit you in the eyeball and that hurts. Okay, so a deposit can be made up of checks, currency, or coins, and then put into the bank account. This is just to avoid fraud, um, and this is a practice that was more of what I did 10 years ago, and I don't do this as much now. The phrase for deposit only, and the account number should be written on the back of the check, as well as your signature. If you do that, then it'll make sure that the check can't be um, cashed by any anybody else. Um, 
Your employer can also make a direct deposit what, what, of your check. So make sure you guys write in direct deposit. This is a deposit electronically transferred from your employer's checking account to your checking account. Another way to, to make a deposit is to use an automated teller machine. Now back in my ancient days, they actually had a lady standing at a window and as you drove through, you talked, and I don't know why it was always a lady, but it was, um, you talked to the lady and I was super thrilled to do that because you'd get a sucker. And then you put it in the, like this little sucky tube and then it would, she'd receive it from her end. It was a bizarre and weird ritual, but that used to be the, there was a teller there and then they, digiti they digitized it. So now we have an ATM. It performs basic banking functions, check deposits, cash withdrawals. And you can even transfer money from your checking to your savings account on an ATM. Um, you need an ATM card and your ATM card has a personal identification number. The card allows you to access your bank account and deposit your checks into the machine. Anybody, has anybody used the new take a picture of your check to deposit into your account? Yeah. How long does it take before your check gets cleared through your bank? Isabel? Isabel says three days for her. So the reason why I don't use the take a picture is because there is that three day waiting period and sometimes I need money right now. Um, but if you don't need it right now and you can wait the three days, you can take a picture of that check and it deposits it straight to your account. It's pretty cool. Uh, business owners should always deposit all of the money they receive in order to establish a money trail. They should always deposit all the money they received, currency, coins, and checks, and then separately withdraw the money. I know this sounds crazy, because if I have my snow cone machine, and I sold a bunch of snow cones that day, I'm depositing $500, but I need $25 um, from a Domino's pizza, I am going to deposit all the $500, even if I have the cash, to just take $25 out. Because what it does is it shows that $500 is going to match my receipts for the day, and I'm going to deposit in there. That $25 is for my own personal use, so I need record that I've actually done the transactions I say I've done. If you start pulling money out of your business um, before it's, it, it's properly accounted for, then um, you might mess up your books and get in trouble with your bookkeeping. So um, they're, they're recommending depositing everything. And I have to do that for, um, because I'm the activities director, anytime we do money for homecoming, um, for ASB card sales, um, the student store, that kind of stuff, I have to write a receipt for it. I have to deposit all that money into the account. And then if I need to withdraw any for, um, reimbursements or whatever, I have to write a separate request for that money back out. It's just good money practice, and the older I get, the more I have to do it. Okay, here's the, it's formula time, guys. Your total deposit is your three pieces of money added together. Your currency, so you guys are writing this whole thing down. So your total deposit is equal to the paper money, plus the jingly money, plus your checks, and then subtract out the cash you want to receive back. That's what I want in my pocket at the end of the... All right, so we have three practice problems here, and I'm going to do, um, oh yes, I forgot it's really small. So let me blow it up a little bit so that you guys can see.
Okay, so we have our buddy Manuel Romeo. He's making a deposit into his checking account. He has checked for $435.20, and $327.96. So those we're going to add in to our total. His cash consists of 15 one dollar bills so let me show you how that looks it's 15 one dollar bills he has seven five dollar bills he has three ten dollar bills and then we move into this is all of his so this is all the currency. So how much, let's see, I think we're on Blanca. Um, so it's Blanca Dinero uh, Gieti, or no, Quise Un Dolor. How much money is that? It's, it's Kinte. See? So 15 Kinte, um, $1 bills, uno dollars, is $15. It's Kinte dollars. So how much, um, Wendy? Wendy, how much is seven five dollar bills? Can't say we go dollars. Uh as Trinta think of, yeah. Thirty-five. So seven five dollar bills is thirty-five dollars. If you don't know how to get that, you just multiply. So four. So you only multiply. So what is ready? Three ten dollar bills. Thirty dollars. Yeah. So the total of our make it rain, the total of our currency is Ochenta. It's $80. All right, Ms. Jenna, do you have a calculator? We are going to need it hard here because 24 quarters. What is 24 quarters? It is $6. Good job. And then five dimes. Chago, what do you got? Five dimes. Uh, 50, cents. 50 cents. Yes. Fifteen nickels. Fifteen nickels. Brenda, are you ready for that? Fifteen nickels? <laughs> okay, Thor, you got that difficult one. Fourteen pennies. Yeah, it's fourteen cents. All right, so the amount of jingly change. Serenity, can you add those together for me? The amount of jingly change, six dollars, fifty cents, seventy-five cents, and fourteen cents. If you guys are writing down what I'm writing down, you're good. So as I reveal the like book type, that sounds right.
Okay. So if you have what I have written in blue, you guys are A okay. And then I'll underline what you have to add to it. Um, okay, so we have $80 in cash, paper money. We have $7.39 in coins. Now we need to add in the check. So our total deposit, so I'm underlining this, so write total deposit, we're going to add 80, 739, and then our three checks. No, that's okay. Okay, so you guys write down how we add all these together. Also write down the minus $75. And then, um, so we're going to put this all on the deposit slip. Sometimes, if you go in and talk to a person at a bank, you have to fill out a deposit slip. So let me show you how we put all these numbers on the deposit slip. These numbers are all from above. So the currency, how much make it rain money do we have? 80. So we put 80, and it's hard to see, so I'm going to write this a little bit bigger. So we put 80 next to currency. How much jingle jangle do we have in our pockets? $7.39. Seven And then we list each of our checks separately. So we're just, if you look, we're just taking this information and putting it on our deposit slip. So this is 435.20. The next one is 271.19. And the third check is 327.96. We're going to add all those together into the column called subtotal. So we add all these together and we get, just in case you can't see it, $1,121.74. 1121.74. So that's what goes in our subtotal. I'll write it a little bit. So then we minus our less cash received, so we're going to minus the $75, and our total is $1,046.74. Usually, if you're making a deposit, you have to sign um, your deposit slip. If you're not making, um, I'm sorry, if you're making a withdrawal, you have to sign your deposit. Okay, okay so our, um, we're on 4.2 now. So our lesson objective for 4.2 is to write a check. I wasn't super thrilled with the um, example problem, so if you look on the second page, we actually are going to write a couple checks together. So is there anybody here who has a checkbook that they write checks from? I don't know. Oh. Quentin, you do? No. Okay. So when you open a checking account at a bank you de uh, deposit checks and currency into the account so you guys are writing this down as I'm revealing it then you can write checks on this account a check is a paper document directing a bank to deduct money from your checking account 
and make a payment. In fact, if you write a check, the, the bank routing number is on there as well as your checking account number. So those two pieces of information are on a check. Your account must contain as much money as the amount of the check you are writing so that you do not overdraw your account. If you overdraw, your account does not have enough funds to pay a check you wrote. A return check is sometimes called an overdraft. To write checks, you need to be able to write dollar amounts in word form with the decimal expressed as a fraction. So we're going to look at two examples of this and then do two examples on our own. So $65.50. And 29 cents. Where you see the decimal is where the word and goes. So that's why it's 65 and 29 over $100. Because cents or the pennies are out of 100 to get to a dollar, we write it 29 out of 100. So if we look at 23 and 42 over $100, if we're writing it as a money, it's $23 and 42 cents. So we're going to do that with these two items right here. This guy is 26. And 55 over a hundred dollars. So when you have pennies, you put it over a hundred. And this guy here, 33, sorry, it's 30. And it's where the decimal goes, 20 over a hundred dollars. So that's 30.20. All right, now for the fun part. Let's flip, once you have this written down, let's flip the page and write some checks. Three basic I'm going to write some checks. That's yes. Write some checks. So, I added this little screenshot of all the little pieces of information that are on a check. So if you leave a check lying around, you're actually leaving a lot of your personal information and it's not a super good idea. So if you look at the top left, it's going to have your name and address. Stalkers love that. Um, Pay to the order of, this is who the check goes to. So right now I have a contractor at my house and he is tearing apart and rebuilding my deck and we just gave him money and so I put his name here where it's pay to the order of. The amount right here is in words. So on this part, the amount in words goes right here by on the same line where the dollars are. Up here in this little box next to the dollar sign, that's where you write the, the number with the decimal. In the memo, you write what it's for. So memo just means it, it helps you remember what you wrote the check for. This little guy down here this is your bank's routing number. So it tells, um, it tells whoever cashes this check which number the generic bank and trust uses to get money out of their accounts. Your account number lives right here, right in between the two frowny faces. And then the check number lives right here and up here at the top right. Definitely want to put your signature in the bottom right.
It's not valid unless it has a signature. Okay. So what color pen or pencil do we use? Or sorry, what color pen do we use for legal documents? Black or blue. Could only in order to be a legal legally signed document, could only use black or blue. Um, the bank will accept other colors. However, if you're truly being legal binding, it has to be blue or black ink. So I'm going to take my blue ink, and we're going to write our check to Herc Jones for $25. What is today's date? 10 So it's 10 We are paying this to her. Jones. This is for real what your cap and gown costs. And if you haven't bought your cap and gown yet, you guys make sure you see Mrs. Gruden in the office and figure out how to pay them. So it's for $25. So now this is the part where we write 25. What is the top of my fraction? Zero, right? If you leave it blank, then somebody can cheat you out of. So I a zero out of a hundred dollars, and I draw a line after my fraction all the way until it touches the word dollars. Because I don't want anybody to mess with my check and write extra stuff in there like bajillion. I'm not paying out the jillions of anything. The memo, what is this for? Cap and gown. And then go ahead and write your signature. Once you're done with the first gel, let's go ahead and buy a yearbook as well. So your yearbook is the check goes to Justin's, and I have a check made out to Justin's for a yearbook. Um, so it goes to Justin's, put today's date on it. It's for a yearbook, and it's for $70. Justin's. So seventy and zero one hundred. I put a line for my fraction to the word dollar because I don't want anybody adding any little extras after I pass this check off to my student to then take to the yearbook teacher. See how the, the process can get completely messed up. So it's for a yearbook. And go ahead and scrawl your signature.